What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a new projector. This is the JM Go N1S Ultimate 4K Laser Projector. Taking a look at the specs, this has a triple laser projection with a 4K resolution, a brightness of 3500 ANSI lumens, a 1600 to 1 contrast ratio, built-in Google TV, and stereo speakers with 20 watts of power. All right, so a cool little bonus with this projector is the package that it comes in. It's not actually a box, but it's a foam container. And this doubles as a carrying case for the projector. So you have this handle on top. You have this little latch here to lock or unlock it. When you have this closed, you can't open it, but open that up. Now you can open it up just like that. This is all made of styrofoam. So as you can hear, it's pretty similar to a styrofoam cooler, but it does feel a bit more stiff and better quality. And then looking inside, you have a form fitted cutout for the projector. And then you also have another space over here to carry the remote and your power adapter. So taking a look at the projector itself, this is a nice and modern looking projector. It's all gray and just overall has a simple but sleek look to it. Considering that this does 4K and has 3,500 lumens, it's also very compact as well. Compared to a full-size home theater projector, this is at least half the size of one of those. And as you can see here at the bottom, you have a built-in gimbal. And you can turn this up and down like that. And then the bottom has a full 360 degrees of rotation. And from a bottom view, you can see it has rubber grips here. And this whole saucer just spins around like that to make it very easy to rotate the projector. So looking at the front of the projector, you have this very nice glossy finish all around the lens. Right here, you have the lens in the middle. Right here in this section, you have your sensors. And these are for a lot of automatic features, which I'll go over shortly when we get this projector set up. Right here at the bottom, you have your power button to turn it on and off. Turning the projector around, right here in the back, you have all your ports and you have one USB-A port two HDMI 2.1 ports, and one of these supports eARC. And then you also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And last but not least, I do like the remote that's included as it's simple and well laid out, very responsive to use. The only thing is I wish it did have a backlight. So getting this projector set up is very easy. First off, there's two different kinds of projectors out there. There are home theater projectors, and those are usually much larger and they're designed to be installed on a wall or ceiling, set up in that spot and just left there as a permanent spot where that projector is gonna be. And then there's projectors like this one that are lifestyle projectors. These are typically much smaller and lighter and are designed to be used anywhere you want to use them and have a very easy setup most of the time as well. So this projector has a pretty short throw ratio of 1.2 to one. So you can have this fairly close to where you wanna project it and still get a pretty good sized image. As I showed you earlier, you have this gimbal here at the bottom, and this has 360 degrees of adjustability when it comes to the horizontal adjustments. And then it also has 135 degrees when it comes to vertical adjustment. So having this on there definitely makes it very easy to set the image up wherever you wanna put it. Without a gimbal like this, typically you'll have to put the projector on top of something, stack up a few books, do whatever you gotta do to get it to the right height you need it but having this gimbal on there just makes everything a whole lot quicker and easier as well. So turning the projector on, this has auto keystone, auto focus, auto screen fitting, smart eye protection, and a few more things as well. So the gimbal by itself wouldn't be that useful, but since it has all of the smart features in it, that's what makes it very convenient. So right now I have it projected onto the wall as I don't have a projector screen in here yet. Ignore the purple tint that you see on the image as it doesn't look like that in real life. That's just what the phone camera does. So as you can see in real time, it'll shift and adjust the image to make sure it stays perfectly square. You can move this very quickly and it's gonna adjust just as fast. I've used a few projectors that have automatic keystone and all of that. And a lot of times they don't work very well, but this one definitely works very well. Along with the keystone, it's also adjusting the focus to make sure you always get a sharp image as well. As you can see, if you have it projected onto an angle like this, you will get a light border around the image. That's not at the fault of this projector, but that's just how keystone works. It's still projecting the same image onto the wall, but using the sensors and internal processing, it warps and manipulates the image to make sure you get that nice and square picture. So if your room allows it, I would recommend trying to find a spot for the projector to be as straight as possible. And then of course, if you don't have any way to do that, 
you can just put it at an angle like this and it's still perfectly usable and fine. On camera, you can see the light border pretty well, but in person, it's really not that noticeable. And once you get something plain, it becomes even less noticeable. Another feature this has is smart object avoidance. As you can see right now, I have it projecting onto the curtain. So if you have a small and limited spot, and this is the only spot that you can project it at, just turn that on. The sensors will detect everything and automatically resize the image. So you're getting a nice and flat image with nothing interfering with the picture. Another cool feature this has is adaptive wall color. As I said earlier, I am projecting onto my wall as I don't have a screen yet, but the wall is white, so I'll probably leave it as is. But if you have a yellow wall, gray wall, blue wall, whatever it is, just go ahead and turn this on. This is gonna shoot different colors onto the wall so its sensors can figure out what color your wall is and offset the image. So this way you're still getting a nice and accurate image and your picture is not being influenced by the color of your wall. So looking at the projector interface, this does have built-in Google TV, so you don't need to hook up anything to the projector. You can just turn it on and straight out of the box, you're gonna be able to use your apps. As far as apps go, you can pretty much get any app out there. If it's in the Google Play Store, then it'll work on this projector. And that does include Netflix. A lot of projectors don't have Netflix on it because they don't have the proper certification and they don't wanna spend the money to get it. So typically they'll include some instructions on how to get a workaround version or use it in the browser. With that, it's usually a much lower quality and doesn't work as well. But again, this one does have native Netflix on the projector. This also has Wi-Fi 6, so if you wanna cast on your iPhone or Android device, you can also do that here as well. So diving into the image features, this has their patented MALC triple laser optics. This is gonna give you better color accuracy and overall just a better image compared to a single laser projector. This has a 110% BT2020 color gamut, which is better than a lot of projectors out there, including some that cost even more than this one. I've been using this projector for about two weeks now, and honestly, it's just hard to watch a movie and actually watch the movie, because I keep getting distracted by staring at random details or just being amazed by how much everything just pops off the screen. My old 4K projector is 2000 lumens and this blows it away in every aspect, the colors, the brightness, and overall the image just stands out a whole lot more and it's just much more enjoyable to watch. When it comes to brightness, this is definitely a very bright projector. When you first get it, you'll likely set it to 10 and be amazed by how vivid everything looks, but I warn you, your eyes will start to hurt from having it that bright. And now that I've had it a little longer, I usually set the brightness around three to four for most of the time. If you have it projected onto a larger screen, then you might need to use a higher setting, but I tried it out projecting a massive 200 inch screen on my garage. And even then number six or seven was still more than enough brightness for that size. The only time I would recommend using a brighter setting would be if you have the lights on or are using it in a room with a lot of sunlight. In this case, a brightness of seven or eight looked best to me. Even when you have this in a very bright room, the image is still very visible. Yes, you lose some contrast in black levels, which is inevitable unless you have a light rejecting screen, but even onto my wall, it is still a very usable image and you can still see everything happening very clearly. If you go into settings similar to a laptop or phone, this also has auto brightness. So you can just turn that on and let the projector set itself to the best setting, depending on the light in your environment. When it comes to HDR, this is definitely the best I've seen on a projector so far. And a lot of that is thanks to the very high brightness. Everything just pops and the highlights really stand out. A lot of projectors get washed out and lose contrast as you set them brighter, but this one looks great even at the highest brightness. Again, definitely the best projector HDR I've seen so far and it's starting to get real close to the quality of an actual TV. Another feature this has is Dynamic Light Speckle Reducer Technology, or LSR for short, and this reduces laser speckle by a very impressive 97%. At first, I thought I had speckles on the screen, but as I got closer, I realized it was just the texture of the wall. I tried this on my projector screen that I have in my basement and got very close to the screen, and fortunately, I did not see any speckle. I also took a video as close as possible, so you can see this for yourself as well. When it comes to gaming, this has a 15 millisecond latency in 4K mode. For casual gaming, anything 50 milliseconds or less is usually good enough. And then if it's a quicker game or a first person shooter, that's where you'll want at least 30 milliseconds or less. 
My old projector had a latency of 50 milliseconds and with regular gaming it really wasn't that noticeable. But if I played something with quick movements like Twisted Metal, that's where I could really feel the button delay and everything overall just felt sluggish. As I just said, this has a 15 millisecond latency which is a complete night and day difference compared to what I came from. And no matter what game I play, latency was pretty much undetectable on this projector. When it comes to sound, this has audio that was co-developed with Dyna Audio, which is a high-end audio company. When it comes to the actual speakers, this has two 10-watt speakers, which are rated to play as low as 45 hertz. With most projectors, it's almost mandatory to use an external sound source just because of how tinny or bad they usually sound. But this one definitely has a nice and full sound that is more than good enough to easily enjoy a movie or game directly from the projector. This also has certifications for both DTS and Dolby Audio as well. Last but not least, compared to a regular projector, you don't have to worry about changing the bulb every few years as it does have a very long lamp life of 30,000 hours. All right, so diving into the projector settings, there's a few customizations you can do here as well. So first off, as I showed you earlier, you have the keystone correction. You can turn this on or off from here. So if you wanted to adjust this by yourself, you can also do that here. Going into keystone correction settings, you have auto screen fitting. So if you have a screen on the wall, instead of trying to adjust the projector and line it up, you can just put it in the vicinity of the screen. It'll automatically detect the screen and resize the image to fit that size. So again, definitely much more convenient compared to a regular home theater projector. Up next, you have your focus settings. And here you have your auto focus, manual focus, and focus settings. I've never had to mess with the focus on this projector. No matter where I point it, it does its thing and makes it crystal sharp. You have movement and zooming. You also have a bunch more adjustments with the image in here as well. First off, you have zoom where you can make the image smaller or bigger. You have pan, so if you resize the image, you could also move it around. And then lastly, you also have rotate where you can rotate the image. Like I said earlier, the auto corrections work so well, you're really not going to have to mess with this. You have smart eye protection. I have this on high because if I walk by it, I want it to kick on because this is a very bright laser. And in my experience, this works very well and very quickly. As soon as you barely get into the image, it'll dim the whole image to protect you from not looking at the laser. You have one click dust removal, which basically runs the internal fans at a very high level to blow out any fan that might be sitting on the projector. So definitely something good to run every now and then. Speaking of the fan, this is a very quiet projector. I totally forgot to mention this earlier, but this is nearly silent. At about two feet away, you cannot hear it at all. If you go very, very close to it, you can hear it, but just barely, barely on. I've used quite a few projectors and this is definitely the most quiet one so far. Let's go into display and sound. This has quite a few adjustments as well. As I said earlier, you can go one through 10 with the brightness. Honestly, most of the time I have it around four or five, but you can go all the way up to 10. You're not gonna see the full effect on the camera because I have my exposure way down just to see this, but in person, this thing can get very, very bright. You have your picture modes. Most of the time I like leaving it on standard, but if I'm watching an animation, that's where I'll put it on vivid and everything just pops a lot more. Besides that, you have movie, game, office, and user. I do like to tinker with the image and get it to my liking. So you can customize all of that here as well. And inside the user picture mode, you can customize the brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, and sharpness. A lot of my projectors, I have to mess with this to get it looking better, but out of the box on standard mode, this is a very, very good looking projector. So I haven't felt the need and I'm probably just gonna leave it the way it's configured. You have your HDR toggle on and off. Right down here, you have MEMC. This basically smoothens out the image by adding additional frames between frames. This was very popular back in the early 2000s when TVs were advertising ultra smooth, this and that. Honestly, I don't like the way it looks. On gaming, I can deal with it. But on regular TV content or movies, it gives everything kind of a soap opera effect. So most of the times I just leave that off. I do know some people that prefer to leave it on. So that's just a thing of preference. And as you can see here, this projector does have 3D support, which I'm definitely happy to see. Blu-rays, 4Ks, 3D, it's all things that are getting phased out. If you have 3D movies, you'll know that when you put the glasses on, you do lose a lot of brightness and it can be a very dark image with other projectors. But as I said many times, this is a very, very bright projector. So this is going to work very well for 3D movies. Haven't tried it out yet, but definitely looking forward to that. And then if you want to go more in depth with your picture settings, they also give you advanced settings. And here you have your color temperature, which you can set from different presets or set the red, green, and blue by yourself. 
Looking at the rest of the settings, you have DNR, MPG, and R, which are both noise reduction settings. You have adaptive luma control, local contrast control, gamma, color tuner, and 11 point white balance correction. So again, if you're someone who wants to really, really fine tune and calibrate the projector, you can do it on this model. Moving over to sound, you have a few different presets, standard, music, movie, and sports. If you have this hooked up to external sound, you can also turn those speakers off. And then you also have down mix mode where you can choose from stereo or surround sound. And last but not least, you have your audio outputs. You have auto mode, or you can also choose from these four settings as well. And then you also have a digital output delay. A few other settings in here, but these are more related to Google TV and not to this projector. So I'm not gonna go over those, but definitely a good amount of settings that you can mess with in this projector. Overall, this is definitely a great projector. I've owned quite a few projectors over the years, and this is definitely one of the best I've used so far. From the brightness to the overall image quality, I honestly have no complaints about this projector. So all in all, if you happen to be shopping for a portable but well-performing projector, I would highly, highly recommend this one here, which again is the JM Go N1S Ultimate. If you would like to buy or get more information on this projector, I'll also put the link to it in the description as well. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.